everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Simply Celicia, and we are doing a multi chat today. And there's like so much to catch up on. I was just so like out of the loop and out of routine after I went home and like doing all of that and coming back and trying to get into a routine again, but also being sick and just everything. It's finally coming together, and I'm sitting here in front of you and I'm gonna talk about all the things that we missed kind of talking about previously. Um, I'm starting kind of at the beginning of the month here with a lot of like EXO activity. So Dio had released the song for EXO Els before doing his military service. I am behind, like I haven't listened to the song yet, uh, but I know everyone really appreciated it. I heard that he's been excelling in his military service so far. Of course he will excel no matter what he does. He is Dio. And Baekhyun dropped his song and I listened to that one, I dug the vibe. Um, I really, really liked Chanyeol and Sehun's subunit. I really liked their music. It's kind of like a really nice time for it to be out. I kind of feel like that vibe that they went for. Um, so that's a lot of things have been going on with kind of just little projects that EXO members have been doing. Um, I saw Itzy's comeback for Icy. My first listen, I was like, whoa, what is this? What's going on? Like, what am I listening to? And then, like, after a few more listens, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is so, like, they have, like, a very experimental kind of sound. And that makes them feel, like, really fresh. So, like, some of their choices are really cool. Um, for me, it just takes, like, a couple of tries. And, you know, I've had that experience many times. Obviously, my favorite girl group is Red Velvet. And they have a lot of experimental sounds, too. So, I really like having that dynamic in a group. Um... It's really refreshing, so I'm curious to see, you know, how people feel about it and how they do moving forward. I haven't seen, like, any stages at all. Like, I have seen zero performance stages of any comeback. I am so far behind. Um, let's see. Woosung came out with his solo. I did a reaction to his title track of Face. Uh, Mamamoo had Gleam. GWSN had a comeback. I really liked Wusung's solo. Um, it had a really nice like bass line to it, so I like danced in that reaction. Um, but I also listened to the rest of the album and I really liked it. Um, Gleam was like a super effective show off of glasses. <laughs> I have a Gleam here now. Uh, so, you know, Mama Moo is always doing amazing stuff. I am not familiar with their full discography. Shame on me. But I do really like their sound and I always enjoy like their videos and stuff. So they are just always out there being the bosses that they are. Um, GWSN, I have not listened to their comeback yet. I liked a lot of like the promotional pictures and I really liked their debut last year. So I am excited to get into kind of what they did for this comeback. Um, so hopefully sometime soon I'll be able to sit down and just kind of enjoy that. Um, Boy Story had their comeback with Jackson. I did a reaction to that uh, for Too Busy. They're just like as precious as they always have been. And, like it's even cuter together. So please show them a lot of love and you know just kind of sit back and enjoy some music every once in a while. That's what we're here for. Um, so that was another comeback that happened. Um, you know what? I'm going to use the next comeback to kind of segue into the next big topic that I'm going to talk about today. Um, but we're going to talk about NCT Dream's comeback. And the Dreamies had their Weeboom comeback. I do like Boom the best off of that comeback album. And they have just such an amazing vibe together. Like, I would really like to see them all stay together. Um, but... I did not do a reaction to that video for two reasons. The first being that they put our sweet, sweet Chanle in cornrows and, you know, a bandana and stuff. And it's not really up for debate for me that they did that so that he would look edgier, older, more urban, you know, a tough guy look. Um... And, you know, that's just, that's why they did that. They know that the Dreamers are heading to graduation and they want to, you know, kind of age them out of their original concepts. And, you know, it's just very clear why they did that. <laughs> and it's not okay. It is offensive. Um, 
And I know, like, it's one of those things where, like, it, there's another artist every day because it's been a trend in the music scene and fashion scene right now for that hairstyle. And I just, <laughs> it gets frustrating. Like, I'm not, it doesn't make me, like, angry. Like, I'm not mad. I always say that. Like, I'm not, like, oh, how dare you? Like, you have no, like, respect stuff. Like, I don't feel that way towards Chale. He was probably excited about his little hairstyle, but I am ex I am frustrated beyond belief with SM, like we all are half the time. Um, it's one of those things where it's like I got 99 problems and SM is probably the hundredth one. Um, it's something that they're just kind of in hot water in terms of like with the fans this week. It's been like every day another thing and. Um, just rewinding a second, the second reason that I didn't do a reaction for it is because I've already done so many, like, in these last few weeks that I'm trying not to overdo reactions on this channel. They bring a lot of unique viewership to the channel, and, you know, that's amazing, and I enjoy that a lot. Um, but I want to be focused on offering and doing other things that I like to do on this channel. I don't want I don't want to just do that. I want to be able to diversify my uploads and have moments like this where we just do a multi chat and hang out and have, you know, different things and different groups and like educational stuff. So that's the other reason why. Um noise outside. <laughs> I have spoken about cultural appropriation on my channel, and I'll continue to speak about it. I just am. But um, I think what further added fuel to the flames in terms of like Charlie's hairstyle and everything is having the members like laughing about it and joking about it, and they're saying, you know, it's like an octopus and blah, 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 blah. And you know, that can be offensive to fans of color and fans who just naturally have that hair and everything else. We have gone over this <laughs> many times. I can link them again um, if you're new here and you kind of want to see my take on talking about cultural appropriation in K-pop. I will link it here and down below. But I think it's honestly, it's, it's not surprising. And the reason it's not surprising is because it's all clearly showing like a showcase of a lack of education on like braids and hair hairstyle and just like the cultural significance of it it's just it just shows a certain level of ignorance amongst everyone and the problem is that i understand it for them to have a certain level of ignorance to it it's starting to grate on me that sm can still do this because it's been years and years and years of this, and I know it's been brought to their attention multiple times. And they, unfortunately, a lot of companies, and like not just SM, a lot of companies, in a lot of situations where things like this happen, it kind of falls on deaf ears because they're, they don't want to address it because they think it's going to make it a bigger deal. But then by not addressing it, you're just frustrating people further. So, you know, I just think that you know, regardless of what artist it is or who's doing in getting into this kind of style and having these problems again and again and experiencing backlash, it's going to continue to happen until there's wide scale education and cultural training and, you know, just diversity in a company. And I think the reason why it is like so detrimental, at least, at least it stings more when you see it from you know groups like stray kids or nct because they're usually pretty well rounded in certain issues and i think what happens is like especially from nct from my viewpoint as an international fan is one of the major pillars for nct as a whole is their globalization and inclusivity of everyone so like they want them to target different areas all over the world and you know they want to have them spread like their sound and their music and everything and um you get inspired by the different places that you go but you can't just kind of adopt something without understanding what it is about and in order to have true and 
reclusiveness with amongst your fans, it's important to take time and learn about what it is that you're borrowing from and know that you're not using it as just a temporary style or, you know, just a shorthand way using, you know, the stereotypes to drum up a specific look or a specific feel. Um, and I think that it's one of the things, it's so frustrating because they're all so great at what they do. They're so talented and, you know, they truly care about their fans. Most idols do. You just see it. And I can see that passion in them. And, you know, these hiccups distract from that when companies and stuff have a refusal to kind of address it. And the refusal to acknowledge those concerns from fans and you know, kind of block it out and try and, you know, move past it without ever creating a space to hear them. And also, you know, kind of not making changes to something that is so easily, like, fixable. You know, the situation is so fixable and can feel make fans feel included that it's frustrating to hit that wall again and again and again. And... It's one of those things, like, even if the artist at some point or another is made clearly aware, by not providing the opportunity to show apology and growth and lead, it, it just leads to further distrust when you don't give your artists that platform out of fear. Because fear doesn't fix anything, you know? Sometimes you just have to walk through the trash and the garbage and the hard parts to get to a better place. And, you know, that's part of the globalization of the sound and, you know, being inclusive. And it's in a very important step for the lasting power of K-pop in these markets. And so when I see companies kind of ignoring what is being said, it's just one of those things where it's like, well, why are you borrowing from it if you're not going to actually include be inclusive about it? So, you know... It's not just SM. It's many other groups. It's been many other artists this year. It will probably be more artists this year. It's one of those things that it just constantly cycles around. Um, and all we can do is just continue to do our best to make sure people are educated and hope that they bring in people who that is their job to help kind of keep those things in their mind and, you know, educate them on these kinds of things. Um, it's just hard to kind of gauge because we don't know the full picture. We don't know the full story. We don't know kind of what's going on behind the curtain. So it's just frustrating to not have a dialogue about that. At least some kind of letter, something that helps us gauge what it is that you know and don't know. Um, but to segue that, <laughs> here's the thing. There's a lot that happened this week. To segue that into like SM just as a company, they're going through like a lot of structural arrangements. They are like meeting and restructuring like CEOs. They have, you know, there's been a few days now, like back to back to back in a row of them just being in hot water, hot water, especially with in citizens on their manager's treatment of NCT. Again, a fucking again. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Same old fucking shit. There is a history of unrest with in citizens kind of about the way that the managers treat them in their live videos and things that we see. And it's no mystery that Rinjun was recently left behind. He was left behind, no ride, you know, no umbrella, out in the rain, <laughs> just kind of had to figure out what he was going to do um, without an umbrella while well, a manager kind of entered the car and left with other members. And, you know, the same manager has been accused of being handsy with Gino and they are told not to speak about Win Win when they're on their lives and there's just been a lot of confusion about is Wavy a part of NCT because they've been refused to put kind of like NCT's name on kind of like wavy promotions and like what their like wiki page and stuff and it's honestly just been a mess <laughs> and it's all at once 
and it's been hard to follow sometimes and it's just one of those things where like things are building things are building and building and building and I think there is so much speculation around all of it and I haven't seen any clear evidence of things like the manager getting handsy with Gino for example or you know I don't want to like invalidate that it could totally have been it'd be something that's happening I just haven't personally come across any like clear-cut evidence of it um and I think that it's important to have very clear-cut evidence of stuff like that I want to know because it's not what they deserve by any stretch of the imagination that's not what a manager does and it's not their place and her job is to manage you know like members shouldn't be out in the rain kind of thing I just I think there is enough problems there for us to question what is going on what is the dynamic of the manager's attitudes towards NCT members and not to be that person but as I said I have a history following SM and I know things are complicated when you're running a company whatever whatever and the thing is a lot of these issues remind me of issues that happened with EXO and if they couldn't get it right then <laughs> And they still seem to be falling short now. I just, I'm having a hard time finding any excuse for it. A manager is meant to make your artists feel, you know, secure. They are meant to organize things. They are meant to get them from point A to point B, have needs covered and more. Like, they have a long list of things that they need to do. And there are multiple managers. Um, a scenario where your artist is standing outside lost trying to figure out you know what their ride situations and just out in the open without at least not like one other staff member of any degree out there you know it makes no sense to me it just doesn't it just doesn't make sense to me this isn't a small inexperienced company it's sm <laughs> and to have someone you know working for sm that can't do some of these basic things and is clearly irritated a lot of the time with their kind of like dialogue with NCT members in the live videos. It's just beyond excuse because it's just one of those things where it's like, yes, people should be questioning your work ethic and the way that you manage because it doesn't add up. And, you know, just like little things too like they have it's they have relationships among subunits they've all worked together in one capacity or another it's doesn't make sense that they are harshly being told not to speak about Winwin or any other member from another unit if they're just briefly kind of like bringing them up because they interact with each other they're friends they love each other, they enjoy hanging out, they have a history together. So I don't think it's particularly distracting from, you know, whatever the goal of their V-Live is. Um, and I understand, like, some of the ones before were, like, about brand management stuff. Like, I get that. I don't get trying to hide relationships among members. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand for what reason they wouldn't be able to briefly mention someone. And it's just hard to kind of understand what exactly is going on there. Um, once again, it's things that are going on behind the veil. It's things that we just don't have any con like full context for and they won't provide it. So it's frustrating because they clearly are str like they clearly get hurt by that when they're on the V Live. You know, it does alter their mood. We see those changes in their dynamic when certain managers say something or you know something is going on so like I under I see like something is just not adding up and um while I think that these claims need to have clear evidence and you know these are people's jobs that we're talking about and everything else I do clearly see that things aren't lining up and without having a discourse from company and everything else it just leaves everyone in the dark and creates 
more distrust, it creates more problems. So I do think that they need to kind of look into it and it just doesn't make sense. They deserve better than that. You know, like you can't just treat your artists anyway. And you know, they're young and they grow up and, you know, I'm sure, you know, they can present their own challenges and stuff, but it just doesn't make sense. Like, make it make sense, <laughs> you know? That's just kind of where I'm at with that. The next big rumor that has, like, a lot of people talking is the potential for uh, SM to be making a super group. So, like, it's definitely a rumor. This hasn't been proven or anything or, like, reported on by an official source. Um, from like SM or anything, but according to the reports is that they're trying to put together a super group that is Taemin from Shiny, Kai and Baekhyun from EXO, and then it would be Taeyang, Mark, Lucas, and Ten from NCT. And I don't know like what kind of concept they're going for, but I just not sure what like special side project this is like what is the purpose of it i know like seeing all those names together like they'd be a powerhouse in music they'd be an amazing group they'd look awesome they would do amazing stuff um my like concern in general unsurety is like i guess i don't know why like i don't i can't see it being like a whole group necessarily I could understand it if they were like oh we're not making a group we're just doing like a special collab or like this is just for like a special stage at the end of the year or something like I understand that and I do understand it from a viewpoint of like shiny and exo having a lot of members on military leave and just you know trying to put members together but I guess I don't understand why that would like, why Tame and Kai and Baekhyun wouldn't just work? <laughs> why pull Taeyong, Mark, Lucas, and Ten from their established groups that are still building notoriety and still kind of moving things along together? Like, I guess I just don't understand why uproot them from something they're already currently working on just to do this thing. So I guess I don't understand, like, the full concept of what's going on. Um, but I'm curious. Like, I, I want to know what's going on with it. Um, I, it's not because I think that they would be bad. I think they would be amazing. And I just am curious to see what it all means, if this is true and, like, this is actually something that is going to happen. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Because I feel like a lot of them already have their own thing that they're doing just fine. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> In other company news, <laughs> Big Hit has taken over Source Music, meaning that G-Friend is now a part of Big Hit Entertainment. And I think this move made sense for them. Um, the companies have a long history together. They've been, like, they, you know, been friends for a long time done a lot of projects together, shared a lot of resources together. Um, I'm pretty sure... I believe two of the members of G-Friend were like trainees alongside the guys and other members at Big Hit at the time with the glam fiasco and everything else before things were divided up and moved around. And, you know, They've been supporting each other this whole time, and I'm just excited to see if there are any cool collabs or anything that take place in the future. They're still doing their own kind of, G-Friend is still doing their own kind of like sub-label thing. So like they're in charge of their own look still and everything. Um, and I think, you know, they still have, Big Kid has made so many moves <laughs> like in these last few months. Like they still have people that they sourced to start working on a girl group for the sub-label and everything else. So, like, all the things are just kind of getting their ducks in a row. They're, like, moving things along, and they still got, like, a survival show to do and everything else. So I just think that there is a lot <laughs> that's going to be coming out soon. Um, and I'm curious to see kind of what the next steps are and what to expect. I think, 
even more so than that, like the partnership with UNICEF and BTS, like the ad that they came through with was really cute. Um, I was crying <laughs> because that's kind of exactly what it feels like to listen to BTS music. So um, please go out there and support that cause. Um, be someone's light. Show someone their light. Just kind of spread love, end violence, you know, that whole thing. It's an amazing campaign. Um, otherwise, <laughs> this has been such a jam-packed, like, multi-chat. So much has gone on, you guys. And I, you know, there's still things I haven't covered, like the YouTube record being broken and stuff like that with a lot of ads. I didn't really have much of an opinion on it, except that we did it without ads, and <laughs> that's just kind of the tea. Um, <laughs> I think plenty of other platforms have kind of already talked about this and are covering the topic just fine. It's pretty, you know, cut and dry, like, what's going on. Um, and I think that it's ultimately, like, a YouTube thing and something that needs to be considered. It's something that's been called out many times um, to be considered for, like transparency to companies and also transparency into the way that it affects billboard and stuff so like it's something it's an ongoing thing that needs to be addressed and figured out and hopefully they do what they need to do with that but other than that bring the soul movies coming <laughs> and me and margaret are really excited to go um if you want some vlog content on that, let me know. I did the same for Burn the Stage, uh, but I got a copyright strike when I uploaded that video way back. And I it was from a company that I couldn't contact and I could do nothing about it. So I just had to kind of wait for it to expire. Um, I There was no footage of the video in that, like the movie in there. I don't know what it was because they didn't tell me. So. Hopefully, maybe I can just like recut that for you guys with this latest one and kind of just give my like comparison of the two movies. Um, just kind of sit down and talk about it. So let me know if you guys want something like that. Other other than that, um, I don't. There's nothing. There's not much else to talk about. Um, it's been so jam packed with like just every day something else every day. Um, I hope the situations that are currently going on get some, some kind of relief, some kind of resolution that makes sense and that, you know, the artists continue their promotions, you know, you can still show love and get your like point across that you need to kind of look at what you're doing. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I think everyone will turn out for the better and things will get fine. So um, just continue to show your love and support as you wish and, you know, move on from there. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, other than that, if you like what I do on this channel, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>